Hi, I'm Sutha Baraj. I'm one of the nephrologists at Johns Hopkins, and welcome to ABCs of Kidney Disease. In this segment, we're going to discuss the diagnosis and staging of chronic kidney disease. So chronic kidney disease is a lot more prominent than people realize. About 37 million adults in the U.S. are estimated to have chronic kidney disease. That works out to about one in seven adults. Now the challenge is about 90% of these individuals may not be aware that they have kidney issues. So why is the diagnosis challenging? You have to lose about 85% of your kidney function before you may become symptomatic. And so we don't want to wait till symptoms, so we're relying on blood tests and urine tests to be able to pick up that diagnosis early and help us intervene early. So who's at risk for kidney disease or who should be screened for kidney issues? Individuals who have a history of diabetes, have a history of high blood pressure, have family history of high blood pressure, diabetes, or kidney disease. Individuals who are over the age of 65, people who have had history of an acute kidney injury, even if they recover back to their usual level of kidney function, they're at risk of developing chronic kidney disease later on in life. And those individuals who struggle with obesity are also needing to be screened for chronic kidney disease. Luckily, diagnosing kidney disease is easy with two different tests. There's the urine test, which is an albumin to creatinine ratio. It screens for the amount of albumin, which is a type of protein in the urine. That can be a marker that there's been damage to the kidneys or that the kidneys are working much harder than they should be. The other test is a blood test called create for creatinine. Now creatinine is a waste product from our muscles. We have no other use for it. So it's a good way of measuring how well are the kidneys filtering or cleaning the blood. Now everyone has a different amount of muscle mass. And so we can put these creatinine levels into formulas that adjust for how old we are, whether we're men or women and nutritional status, and it gives us a calculated or an estimated glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. The glomerular filtration rate, or GFR, it's a measurement of how well are your kidneys cleaning or filtering the blood. So creatinine is a waste product. You don't have any use for it. The higher your creatinine is, that could be a reflection that your kidneys are not effectively working to clean the blood. So it indicates how much kidney function you have, it's considered normal as long as the GFR is greater than 90. It will normally decrease with age, and it will decrease as your kidney disease gets worse. And it's used to help determine what of the five stages in chron of chronic kidney disease you're in. So we have five stages of chronic kidney disease uh, based on the level of GFR. Stage one is a GFR greater than 90, so you have normal cleaning of the blood, but maybe you have protein in the urine or you have a structural change in the kidneys. Stage five is when somebody is preparing for dialysis or transplantation. Stage two, three, and four are when we look for um, complications of kidney disease and we're focusing on the risk factors to slow down the progression of kidney issues. As your kidney disease progresses, creatinine will go up and the GFR will go down. The staging helps us know when you need to have lab work, how often you might need to follow up in the clinic, and when we need to be looking for complications of kidney disease. Now there are many causes of chronic kidney disease, but the two most common causes are diabetes, number one, and high blood pressure, number two. And when you think about how, how many people have both diabetes or high blood pressure, then it makes sense why there are so many people that are potentially affected by kidney disease. There are other categories of uh, causes of kidney disease. One is glomerular nephritis. It's a group of diseases that cause damage to the filtering units in the kidney. And it can either be secondary to an infection or an autoimmune process. Other types of kidney disease are inherited ones, such as polycystic kidney disease, urinary tract obstruction. If someone has constant issues where they're not able to pass their urine, they have that urine backing up on the kidneys and causing damage. Individuals who have repeated kidney infections can develop problems with scarring in the kidneys. And then sometimes different medications can cause some kidney disease. Thank you for listening to our presentation. This has been a part of the Johns Hopkins Nephrology Patient Education Program with the goal of improving the lives of those with kidney disease. If you want to learn more about any of the topics we discussed, here are a couple of different websites with uh, good education resources. Thank you.